Oh, you know. You know what you're doing. I mean, we, this man knows exactly what he's doing. The Wrestling Life. Hey, everybody. It's The Wrestling Life, episode 391, I'm told. It is uh, in the middle of November now. It's 2024. I'm Ethan. Welcome back, Crab fans. I'm Ethan. Well, Ian, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. WWE is hurtling towards Survivor Series War Games at the end of this month. We have a War Games match, and each team is looking for a fifth to water it down. Uh, there's a Women's War Games match that's going to be shaping up there. AEW has a pay-per-view coming up next weekend, and... Oh boy, there's a lot to talk about there. And uh, a free agent seems to be hitting the market. A free agent who once was banned from the country for 10 years. Or five years or eight years, whatever it was. and uh, For uh, for coming across the border illegally. And your guy, Wayne Johnson, is in the news this week. He has a movie, big movie coming out around Christmas time. He signed like on this week for some reason. I was thinking of the yeah, yeah, there's the I was thinking I totally forgot about the crappy Amazon movie and thought it was thought of uh, the Disney movie, the uh, successful movie he did. Jumanji? <laughs> no, the animated one. Oh, yeah. Oh, Moana. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That sequel's coming out uh, this year, I think. Right. Yeah, I think that one is like Christmas or the week before Christmas or something. Anyway, all I know is I still get GQ magazine for some reason, and uh, Dwayne Johnson's uh, on the issue that's in my living room right now, and Dwayne Johnson's all over Variety this week talking about agents and he fired and and peeing and uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll get into all that. WWE Survivor Series War Games at the end of this month. They announced the. They 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 set up war games, uh, team OG Bloodline versus team New Bloodline, uh, on last week's SmackDown, and I think the consensus was okay. Well, war games is always five on five, but they got a pretty good thing with four on four here, so let's not water it down. But. Television on Monday was written around uh, each team looking for a fifth member. So um, what do you think about uh, kind of you were always a five on five guy and we're suggesting this is going to be five on five. And I said, no, four <laughs> on four. And uh, and you were right and I was wrong. So what do you think? Well, given the players that are currently involved, it would make sense. Keep it at four, uh, four on four. Um, I, I like the way you phrased it because it makes it sound like I was just like I was on my hands and knees <laughs> praying to the gods. <laughs> Let this be five on five. <laughs> we need an extra guy on each team so that I, we can get more cinema from Roman Reigns. I wasn't suggesting that you were interceding. <laughs> that you lit lit a prayer candle. <laughs> And uh, however, you were all the time, I would yes. say, oh, this is four on four. And you're like, well, war game is usually five on five. So I would think they're going to do five on five, but I don't know. Right. And uh, yeah, you were right. So, yes, absolutely. Um, So, yeah, I, I I would have been fine if they kept it to four on four. Again, it would all make sense. Um, It looks like the the world's champions are pairing off for singles matches. So. Uh, I don't think it's going to be Cody as the fifth guy there. So, like, I guess it's fine. If Well, my thought along the time, because we know they've had another another Anawai or Tongan waiting in the wings, I think one yep. of each for a while now. Yeah. So I always thought, okay, well, Hikaleo is going to show up one of these days and be the fifth guy, and then they'll get Cody. But now it looks like Cody is probably going to wrestle Kevin Owens at that show. Um, so I I don't know who, unless it's – and Seth is still paired off with Bronson Reed, unless the fifth guys are Bronson Reed and Seth Rollins. But 
they made a big dramatic show long thing out of Seth Rollins not wanting to team with either side, even though he uh, hates Roman Reigns. So uh, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know who the fifth guy would be if it's not Seth or Cody, because there just doesn't seem to be a ton of options unless, uh, you know, it's like CM Punk, I guess. <laughs> I think uh, now that now that the Saudi show's uh, over, <laughs> Phil, can, Phil can find a smile and come back to TV, I would bet. So maybe that's maybe that's the way you you punk. I, I I don't know what punks just like why you. That's the other thing too though because there is whether I enjoy the week to week television of the Bloodline soap opera, everything as far as the good guy team makes sense so far. Of like, you know, Jimmy made peace with Jay and then Jay recruited Sammy on Jimmy and Roman's behalf. It's like okay, right. that all tracks. And then if it's like. And now just a random fifth guy who doesn't really have history with any of them uh, other than punk famously going on a podcast uh, that's been scrubbed from the internet because of various lawsuits uh, where he complained about Michael Hayes telling him he needed to put Roman over strong. Uh, I don't, (laughs) I don't, I don't know what punk would do on that team, but I also don't know who, if there is another obvious fifth guy, unless Hikaleo goes to the heel team and Lani Anawai goes to goes yeah. to Roman side. I guess you could do it that way. Yeah, it could be something like that. Uh, we're speculating here and uh, and really we could speculate all night. <laughs> they could do any number of a thousand things, as you like to say. Um, I don't know that it's super clear where it's going. I mean, any way you do it, I think you're putting a hat on a hat, yeah. adding, adding a fifth guy here because, look, you could put Punk on on Roman's team and then with uh, bring Heyman back to TV, and you could do, you know, they have the connection there, and then we're setting up Roman and Punk for down the line somewhere. Sure, uh, but I feel like we're muddying, we're muddying things if we do that. Unless it's the big, the big blow off for the bloodline bloodline, and then you know, great, <laughs> sure, let's branch off then into into punk and Roman and right. whatever else we're doing. I don't know. I mean, ideally, a big five on five cage match would be the end <laughs> <laughs> of these guys shooting together. But this is the World Wrestling Federation, and as we know, anything can happen. So I would imagine this will not be the end. Mostly just because what do you build the show around? <laughs> Right. What do you build it around? They've, they've got... built it around bloodline drama and gang wars for, I mean, five years. But this this one in particular, since the summer. So, what about Dwayne? Dwayne Dwayne getting in the cage or? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's gonna happen, but I don't know. He's he's in the story. That would be I... something. Uh, do you you do that where he he has his own like special neutral cage and he you don't know whose side he's on until he's gets in the gets in the cage? That would just... that would be better than what I was thinking, which is just he's on one of the he's on the heel team. Right. I don't know, but yeah, that yeah that would be cool. But then you don't you're doing five on four, but whatever, that's cool. I don't care. Uh, the idea of that big jacked up man. St- trying to wrestle in a in a in a double cage two rings uh on one hand it would be easy to hide him in that situation on the other hand how does he not tear every muscle in his body just (laughs) stepping through the ropes right in my in my way of looking at it like he literally gets in the ring hits one rock bottom and on roman and then solo pins him and that's the end like (laughs) I don't yeah, I don't think Dwayne's taking kendo stick shots and <laughs> taking bumps on the metal grating between the rings and stuff. All right. Yeah. Eh, thought you might you might come off the top of the superfly splash. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he did he did break out the cross body in that Cena match, which was like the most which ended up with him t- tearing every part of his abdomen. The second one or the first one? I think it's in the second one. Okay. No, wait. I don't. I, I can't remember anymore. <laughs> Whichever one when when he was going off to film. I think it's the second, second one. Second one. Going yeah, off he, to film Hercules and 
filming was paused because he like tore a bunch of stuff in his yeah his guts yeah he got really badly hurt <laughs> like just like doing a normal pro wrestling match he got <laughs> really really badly hurt <laughs> all right well we'll talk about Dwayne again here shortly uh, you mentioned the world champions pairing off. Damian Priest won a normal contenders match a couple of weeks ago. He and Gunther are going to wrestle over on Raw for the World Heavyweight Championship. And over on SmackDown, uh, Kevin Owens hit a pile driver on Randy Orton to uh, take Randy out for a while and sets up Kevin Owens and uh, Kevin Owens and Cody Rhodes for the other world title, which which we've expected. Um, so, uh, any thoughts on the two world title programs that are marching towards Survivor Series? I really thought we were done with Damian Priest world title matches, but here we are again. I see. I think he's. Uh, I'm going to compliment him and say, I think he's finally over at that level, though. Okay. I mean, he's more. I think the I think the Rhea association and him actually being a full fledged baby face has helped. To be fair, sure. Um, I yeah. I I just I don't I don't I I, I don't know. I don't find his matches particularly uh, <laughs> enthralling. But at least yeah, at least he has the crowd with him a little bit more this time. So maybe they'll be more into match. And Gunther doesn't have bad matches. Doesn't always have great matches, but never has bad matches. So. Um. Yeah. That, that that's fine. It's it's a it's a Survivor Series World Title match, <laughs> right? Um. While you wait for whoever's going to get the the Gunther shot until until Big Bill Goldberg is ready to come back at the Rumble, mm-hmm. to, uh, to face old Gunt. So yeah, it's 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 a, it's a fine tread water thing that's going to be you know. It, yeah, just it moves everyone down the line. You kick the can down the road a little bit on uh, on that one, um, and then yeah, the SmackDown one. It's like we said, we've we've known that was coming. We were just kind of logistically trying to work out what what show it was going to be on. We also um, women's war games match for that show looks to be that'll come together on this week's taped raw. This uh, upcoming Monday's taped raw. Um, Ray Ripley's back. Bianca and Jade. Um, Naomi, Io Sky, and then um, one, two, three. I only see a brawl against four people, so we might need another lady on the heel team. Uh, Liv Morgan, Raquel, Raquel Rodriguez, Tiffany Stratton, Nia Jax. All right. Yep, that's fine. Uh, Nia Jax in a War Games match that sounds fun too. <laughs> it's definitely the most, I think, the most intriguing match now <laughs> on the card. As you always mention, there's an element of danger to her matches. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's just, you never know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, this that feels very tacked on because for once they actually do have a very organic match on the men's side where it makes sense that there would be a war games and then the women's like well it's november and it's war games time so we'll just pair we'll just pair some some people together and that'll be the women's match so like as a as a story it's not it's not particularly enthralling but uh you know the alternative is also i don't know live defense against ria for the well not ria because she's hurt but you know defense against I don't even know who else <laughs> right they have on raw right now uh scarlet and nikki cross in a three-way or something and uh and uh and naya beats bailey again or something so sure why not yeah so yeah war games it's fine eo will do something crazy off the top of the cage again so that'll be that'll be a hoot, a hoot. it's worth the price of admission Um, blah, blah, blah. wrapping up uh, some WWE NXT stuff here. We have number one contenders match coming up here on next week's uh show where uh, Andre Chase will wrestle Ridge Holland, <laughs> a couple of 40 year old dudes wrestling <laughs> <laughs> for the number one to wrestle the 2024 20, year old world champion mm-hmm. uh, at the pay per view. 
So that's what's going on there. We have Iron Survivor Challenge. It's Iron Survivor Challenge series. I know uh, season. I know you are uh, jacked up for Iron Survivor Challenge season. I mean, anything that evokes Jeff Jarrett run TNA gets me excited. There you go. So that's what's going on there. And um, um, here's uh, one to watch this week. Um, this is not the best match I saw this week. Uh, I'm not sure I have a best match I saw this week. <laughs> but uh, Adriana Rizzo in NXT. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Yep. She's yep. Yep. She's got it. And uh, she wrestled Nikita Lyons. Who, uh, oh, she don't got it. <laughs> Moves every, which, um, again, it's probably less than 10 matches uh, in in full that I've ever seen in Nikita Lions. Uh, right. Moves like Kane. <laughs> <laughs> and like Kane in like 2015, not. <laughs> I know, will say before 2002 she, Kane. <laughs> right. Before she tore up all of her knees, um, she used to, she was uh, a bigger person that could, uh, that was still very agile and could like do splits and uh, a lot of karate kicks. Mm-hmm. What was she, Karate Iggy Azalea? Is that what they called her? Sure. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, yeah. So unfortunately, she's since uh, destroyed her, des- destroyed her knees. <laughs> what do you think of this WWE ID program? Speaking of destroyed knees. As uh, WWE looks to be adding, it's an affiliation. It's kind of like what they did to the UK indie scene. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They're signing people. They're getting a stipend training at WWE approved schools and wrestling at WWE approved indies uh, while not signed to the company. This sounds to me like one day the performance center is either not going to be there or it's going to have like 25 students instead of uh 200 <laughs> this, this seems like a department of efficiency thing um but what do you think of this wwe id thing they've got they got jack cartwheel they got pretty much any name that aew would uh use as a jobber on a potential third television show next year mm-hmm. uh, wwe is snapped up a lot of a lot of a lot of angles what do you think yeah i i think they're there is the the immediate. There's always the chance that they just wanted to mess with <laughs> mess with AEW. That's always a fun thing they like to do. Happens all the time, yep. right? And that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, good, clean fun in a wrestling war. Exactly. But there's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing illegal or wrong about doing that. Uh, but there's always that. And then yeah, I think the other angle is what you said, which is they can look at. Okay, we're expensing. Uncle Nick is looking at spreadsheets. <laughs> Yep. He's looking at how much money Paul and Paul and Sean and Albert are spending down there to ha- to warehouse all these kids with ACL injuries that they're training <laughs> in in the performance center. And he's going, well, why don't we just? There's wrestling schools everywhere. Why don't we pay a quarter of that? You know, pay even smaller salaries. <laughs> not not even really salaries, and yep. also farm out the the overhead to these schools that already exist in other places. Yep. Uh, and then they can actually work, you know, they can get a little seasoning before they come in as opposed to having their first ever matches on live national television. Yeah. So, yeah, makes makes a lot of sense. So, yeah, I could see the Performance Center being uh, maybe not completely shuttered, but being uh, scaled back as far as daily uh, wrestling training being done in, in large numbers. Not that they're doing a lot of wrestling. They're mostly doing calisthenics and... <laughs> Um, I don't know what I don't know. <laughs> heavy, heavy, heavy lift, uh, weight lifting. <laughs> yeah, the the joke is they have two hundred twenty four year olds that they pay to work out and have sex with each other <laughs> in a warehouse in Orlando. Sure, and sure, that's the joke, and uh, it's pretty accurate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so I can I can see why uh, I can see why Uncle Nick would maybe look at that and go, "There's probably a more efficient." and more cost effective. Like, I don't think he ultimately cares like about making NXT or other WWE programs better by letting these people train more. Oh, uh, no, of course not. But yeah, he can look at that and go, well, we're spending all this money and we have this facility and our hit record on people that are coming into this performance center is not super high. Yeah. 
unless you have a miracle like Bianca Belair or someone who is just, you know, going to be a star no matter where she started. Right. Uh, so maybe we need to reevaluate how we do this and also spend way less money. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I think, I think it's a multi-pronged uh, attack there. Uh, NXT as we met. Okay. Yep. Uh, covered NXT, uh, speedball, Mike Bailey. I always have to call him speedball. I don't know why we don't call everybody else by their nickname. However, it's always speedball, Mike Bailey, because I don't know, I guess it's a better name than Mike Bailey. Even if a speedball is drugs. Well, (laughs) Mike Bailey by itself sounds like, I don't know, the Denver Broncos defensive line coach. Yes. You know, it's not a it's not a wrestler name, so you got to throw the speedball on there. I think otherwise people won't know who you're <laughs> who you're talking about. To me, Mike Bailey, it's not fair that I'm I'm my first exposure to Mike Bailey was like other than seeing watching okay, so uh 10, 12 years ago, 12 maybe 12, 15 years ago, I heard Chris Hero on a podcast talking about Mike Bailey and how you had to watch Mike Bailey. So I went and out found Mike. Couldn't have been 15 years ago because it was like there was Mike Bailey stuff readily available on YouTube. And uh, I watched Mike Bailey and I was like, ah, it's all right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I've seen I've seen I mean, there's a hundred prospects that have popped more on video than Mike Bailey did to me. But whatever. It was like Chris Hero knows more about pro wrestling than I the mechanics of being a pro wrestler than I do. So I'll take his word for it that Mike Bailey's good. So then Mike Bailey, who's a Canadian fella, very polite, uh, he <laughs> uh, was banned from entering the United States for a period. It may have only been five years, may have been seven years. I don't recall. Uh, but because he was coming over without a work visa and working for Indies, which <laughs> was pretty standard practice back in the day. And he just got busted and i think um Slesia sparks who was working for ring of honor at the time she's since popped up here recently on aew shows as a or ring of honor shows as a as a jobber it's like she was really good 10 years ago and she also was banned from the country for <laughs> <laughs> for for violating the rules anyway speedball ended up in tna and by the time i saw him in tna it was five to seven years later. He had five to seven years more uh, mileage on his body from either Japan or Canadian Indies. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And uh, but he was finally getting his run of the big time there with TNA. He was a big Scott Demore project. Scott Demore loves being on TV. I mean, almost as much as Paul Levesque. <laughs> Uh, and the, one of the Scott Demore's first thing when he was uh, put back in charge of TNA was uh, he put himself on TV giving Mike Bailey a contract, uh, which which is great, but uh, real get yourself over kind of move. Anyway, mm-hmm. Bailey is a free agent now coming up. So that was three years ago now or four years ago now. His TNA deal is coming up. He has uh, he's finally for all his trademarks for his wrestling name. His real name is not Speedball. Uh, so he's finally <laughs> for trademarks for all those. Uh, what do you think? He seems like I, I, I'm trying to say I'm politely trying to say he's washed without just coming right out and saying he's washed. But uh, by the time I saw him, he was washed. And uh, yeah, this is probably. Pro- you probably don't leave TNA unless you are sure you have a job one or the other two places. So what do you think? Yeah. Um... What do you think about Mike specifically? <laughs> and then what? And then what do you think about his uh, contract situation? So as far as Mike, as a, like, as a wrestler, I feel like most of the stuff I've seen of him is GCW stuff. Okay. Um, Cause I don't, I don't consume the product when it comes to TNA. Uh, sure. Very rarely, at least. Yeah. Um, uh, I've seen him have, he and Abushi had a, like a blood sport match that I liked. Okay. I think that was maybe WrestleMania weekend last year or the year before that. Whenever Obushi made like his his first comeback after uh yeah, accusing New Japan of being in bed with the Yakuza and all that. Yeah, and, and murdering his trying to murder his mother. Yeah. Yeah, all that good stuff. Uh yeah. whenever he popped started popping back up on US Indies suddenly right before he had like two matches in AEW and then 
his body collapsed in on him on itself. Yes. Uh, he had a match with Speedball <laughs> at the at the Josh the Josh uh, Barnett's Blood Sport show. I liked that. Um, I've seen him have matches with like Lucha guys on those shows and like the scramble cluster F matches they do. Yeah. That were fun. You know, he could do like a really cool moonsault off the post to the outside and all that stuff. So he's got, he's got some cool, some cool tools in the arsenal. I hate um, those kicks. I hate the kicks. <laughs> the the Naomi kicks. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. yeah, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of those, but he does them. Um, doesn't wear shoes. He wears kick pads with no shoes. Which is a little bit annoying to me, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've I've seen flashes where I go, yeah, this guy's clearly talented, but having not consumed much of his, you know, his, and to to his credit, if there's been any matches that have gotten buzz in TNA in the last five years, not counting when like they brought in Will Osprey to work their shows or whatever, it's pretty much always involving either Speedball or, jo- or uh, Josh Alexander. Like those are the only two guys that anyone ever goes, "Oh my god, that match was great." When, <laughs> when, when you know you see people talking about a TNA show. So, uh, at least on the men's side. So yeah, I uh, I could see him. I I think I think Sean Ross Sapp, like right before we went out, just said they think he's going to AEW. So I, I mean, Kenny Omega has been very publicly like supportive of him over the last couple of years to my understanding. So, um, Hey, you've got a, you've got a tournament coming up and you could use, use a, you could put him right in there and have him, have him be right in the mix with, with other top guys for the, for the continental classics. So, yeah, I mean, he could, he could be a body in, in AEW and we'll see how that goes. (laughs) how long before he's feuding with Chris Jericho or, uh, or in the Don Callis family, but, or he can go to NXT and he can slap on one of those chase you sweater sweaters. I don't know. <laughs> like either would be fine with me. Obviously if, 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 if his selling point in his own opinion of himself is I can have good, long kick-ass exciting wrestling matches, then yeah, I guess, giving AEW a shot is probably the one to go to as opposed to I want to be a, a character and, uh, and do skits in, in NXT, in which case, you know, not that there aren't good workers in NXT, but it feels like his job there would also be to teach a lot of 22 uh, year old former football and rugby players, how to, <laughs> how to not kill, kill someone when you're in there. So yeah, uh, maybe his, immediate ceiling is a little bit higher in AEW when he's the shiny new toy. Uh, and you know, you can, you can set up all these, these dream matches for him theoretically when he, when he gets in the door. Yeah. So I, I, I guess if I was going to say that and maybe with the, with the fightful report in there, yeah, I'll say AEW just because that seems like, I don't know. I've never heard the man speak. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know if he can talk at all. Um, I don't know if he has aspirations to be a, you know, a TV character as much as just a wrestler. So, uh, yeah. so if you if your thing is I can have good good wrestling matches uh, that go more than more than ten minutes long, then yeah, I guess AEW would probably make more sense for him at this point. Speaking of AEW, there was a pretty negative consensus regarding this week's AEW Dynamite episode. And even uh, I didn't see even too many diehards online uh, <laughs> stumping for this episode. Um, just uh, we will preview the, the pay-per-view for next weekend and kind of talk about what happened on the TV as we do that. But just big picture thoughts. Uh, what, did, what did you think of Dynamite this week? Yeah, I thought it was boring. <laughs> um, just really flat. Uh, not not an engaging show. Um and look, to an extent, we are spoiled. We we were and are spoiled by how much, you know, good to great wrestling has been put on regular television over the last five years, for sure. Um, but I think when you don't have any matches that that reach that level of like spectacular, which I don't think they did this week, um, they had some okay, some good matches, but nothing spectacular. When like the matches aren't really hitting that well. And the storylines all feel pretty flat and un, unremarkable. 
I think that's a really good combination for uh, for a show that just feels boring to watch and and not particularly engaging to uh, to to, uh, to experience. The pay per view is next Saturday, mm-hmm. and it's headlined by John Moxley versus Orange Cassidy for the world title. And John Moxley and the Green Trouser Collective um, have. That's not, yeah, that's what it is. The Green Trouser Collective. I was trying to think, it's like, no, it's the Pure Fusion Collective. And like, no, they're the Green Trouser Collective. <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't know. Can I mean I don't want to be negative, uh, middle aged AEW podcaster guy because that role is already taken. Um, I will say though that if you're trying to do an invasion story with Moxley and these guys, and they're not doing like a full on, I don't know, it's not like it's a warring promotion invading or right. it's not full blown NWO thing, but but they're doing an invasion angle with these guys and Marina, and but it's confined to like two segments on the show, not mm-hmm. all the time. Sometimes they're they very clearly are cognizant of, well, we need to have them like wreaking havoc in several segments without overkill, but we, it needs to be like, I don't know this week. It just felt like, okay, Moxley's taking over the super station. They advertise for the show. Why would you advertise that if, if you're the promotion and there there's these invaders Anyway, there's a million logic holes in this because, look, they make Tony Khan a character and Tony Khan's in the announcer's ear every week announcing matches. And uh, he's he's advertising the invaders. And then the invasion is confined to like one or two segments on the show. And it just doesn't feel very uh, cohesive. Moxley's trying. Moxley had the kernel of a good idea here, I think. Mm -hmm. And then the execution is getting wonkier as the weeks go on is my take of the top angle. It also doesn't feel like the most, this, this is always my criticism of their world title program. It doesn't, it it almost never feels like the most important thing on the show. It feels like everything is presented with almost equal importance. Anyway, I have a lot of problems with the top angle right now. That's what I'm trying to say. Does any of this make sense? Do you agree that it's uh, wonky in the execution? What do you think of it? Yeah, I mean, I, I I think the the idea on paper all looks good as far as you know Moxley, Moxley and his guys are mean, and they're beating yeah. everyone up, and they're hurting everyone, and the younger guys are especially getting thrashed. So they look to Orange Cassidy to like be the guy to step up to defend them, right? And he doesn't want to do it, and then Moxley hurts his friend, so he is thrust into this role as as the leader of 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 the AEW uh, good guys against the invading Moxley. It's like, yeah, okay, that all, that all checks. That all makes sense. And I liked, I liked the angle they did with where they beat up Chuck Taylor. I, in general, <laughs> I enjoy seeing Chuck Taylor get beat up. Uh, it's good when he's in pain. Yeah, no, it's, it's right. fun. Right. Uh, anyway, he's, he's probably fine. He's probably a, a nice guy, but he just has a dumb face. Um, Whoa. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I, I liked that angle. I thought the the, by on Chuck Taylor. (laughs) Very, I mean, very entertaining at times. Um, Those parking lot brawls they did were great. (laughs) Anyway, I'm going to stop talking about Chuck Taylor. My TV is very small. I need a new set. (laughs) I'm going to stop talking about Chuck Taylor now. Um, Yeah, I I like, I liked the first couple of weeks of it, but yeah, as it's gone, now it's this kind of thing where it's Darby and orange against the, the green Krauser green trouser collective um which again is fine and will probably lead to good matches but yes it does not feel like i mean the young bucks in storyline ran away because they were scared of moxley (laughs) and and then as a as as punishment for that they killed brandon cutler and then when uh, christopher daniels tried to get involved to stop them killing brandon cutler they killed him too (laughs) So it's like, okay, now they've, and Chris, Chris Daniels is Tony Khan's mouthpiece. Right. So like at some point, unless the reveal is coming that Tony Khan like 
gave them permission to do this Ugh. to get his company into shape. Heal uh, Tony Khan. Yeah. I, again, I don't. I'm not advocating for that. You're just bringing up the possibility. But I'm. Just, well, it it goes back to if you're not going to do that. Oh, I see. No, I see what you're, you're saying. Not, then you're, you know, then you're, then you're leaving this giant logic hole in the story, which is why is the owner of the company not doing anything? Right. Like, why is it up to the wrestlers to defend themselves from getting attacked during every match they have? Like, you're booking these guys in matches, and Moxley and his guys keep running in and ruining the matches and causing DQs and stuff. Shouldn't you be furious about that? Shouldn't you be hiring security to keep them out of the buildings at the very least? Like, well, I don't know. It, also, like, like two of Mox's guys are booked in matches for next Wednesday. Yeah. And they're the trios champions. They wrestle on they wrestle on tape shows like they're just. Yeah, they're around all the time. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Also, Moxley's wife works there. <laughs> like and is regularly just smiling. Sometimes she's doing interviews with the people <laughs> that Moxley attacked the previous week. Yeah. And that's not addressed. Like Orange Cassie doesn't go like, hey, why does your husband keep trying to kill all my friends? Like, hey, what's that's... with your husband's side piece? Right. What's going on there? How did you this come about? You a third. <laughs> and as a follow-up, would you introduce a fourth? <laughs> Nigel's asking. <laughs> not, right. Nigel, we get us. Two-part question. Have you introduced a third? And follow-up, would you introduce a fourth? <laughs> that's incredible (laughs) that is super (laughs) but yeah so yeah so uh, my my long-winded way of saying yes i agree that this feels disjointed and unfortunately i think the only way they can close up the logic gaps in it at this point are (laughs) Heel Tony Khan. Right. Even if he doesn't become a heel on camera, you have to at some point establish that like Tony Khan is letting them do this either out of fear of getting beat up again or because he likes John, he likes what John Moxley is doing. Even if he doesn't become an on screen talking with a microphone in the middle of the ring heel every week, he then becomes like the, the first version of the Vince Russo heel character. Ugh. Ugh. The man behind the curtain. <laughs> Yeah, mm, the powers that be. Yeah, generally speaking, if the only way you can write your way out of a of a storyline you created on your fake wrestling show is to invoke not even the funny, <laughs> terrible Vince Russo stuff that people remember, the really bad 1999 Vince Russo stuff that people have like memory hold <laughs> because it's not even memorably bad; it's just regular bad it's stuff that got him sent home in like three months, right? <laughs> Record time. Where they brought back Eric Bischoff, who they had also fired. <laughs> it's, it's like, well, let's try this. We fired this guy <laughs> and we fired this guy, but maybe if we bring them both back together, it's like it'll just it'll work this time. Oh man. <laughs> let's see. What else do we have going on here on here in AEW? Uh Kyle Fletcher and Will Ospreay. This is another one that's not hitting for me. Uh, maybe because they've put the other Aussie Open guy in it. And uh, he's been gone for a long time. Mm-hmm. He has um, very wide hips. <laughs> a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of partners and former partners of, of Kyle Fletcher's have yeah. that in common. Big birth and hips. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I just, I, I don't think, uh, it's hard to tell what's resonating with the audiences because the audiences are so small. The buildings are are dark and poorly lit because the, the audiences are so small, and uh, I I don't know what's resonating or not, but it feels yeah. to me like the inclusion of the Aussie Open guy has done this feud no favors. Yeah, I mean, now it just feels very telegraphed that he's going to turn on Osprey at the pay per view, uh, and he's going to sure. and he's going to join the Callis family with with Kyle because like what are you going to do with single star Mark Davis no offense to him um so yeah I think it's a I think well it's over <laughs> sorry man your career is over now yeah I mean course, it's like go to ROH find yourself another <laughs> tag find a new guy to tag with who also isn't doing anything yeah I'm sorry Brian Cage and Lance Archer are taken so you got to find another guy um 
but yeah, find another ROH guy who's not doing anything and try to make that work. Because, but yeah, I think in the immediate they're gonna they're gonna throw him into the Callus family, and he'll be another guy standing around. Sure. Uh, Jack Perry, Danny Garcia for the TNT Championship. Uh, I'm just not interested in in a boy fight. What, <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, just give the belt to Danny. Like. Whatever this, whatever their idea was for Jack Perry, but he's Raven. <laughs> I'm tired of it. It's just like it's not even that. Like all of his match, like so he's had some pretty good TV matches, I think, as champion. Um, but it's just not a, it's just not a particularly compelling idea. Also, what is he? What is? He's... And this, if the mm. gimmick is he's not actually. It, it, I get, which I guess was kind of the Raven thing, at least in WCW, right? It was like he acts like he's this outcast put upon uh, loner, but really he's incredibly privileged and and has everything going for him. So it's like, I guess that's the heat. It's like he acts like he's, you know, so so bemoaned and and hurt and 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 put down by the world even though he's the champion and he is best friends with the guys who run the company and and everything but it's like whatever it was supposed to be whatever the idea was in their head they never communicated it properly onto television the, uh, well the closest they came i'm not disagreeing with you mm-hmm. i will say the closest they came is when he pile drive tony khan Sure. Yeah, I mean, like the original bit where he came back. Okay, he was the scapegoat because punk, <laughs> punk attacked him, and and doesn't he doesn't make any home. sense. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, but okay, <laughs> right. But at least, okay, that's 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 the nickname, right? He he got punished. I mean, punk also sure. got punished by losing his job theoretically. But yeah, but fine. You can, right. you can say that, and then yes, okay. he comes back and he takes his revenge on Tony for suspending him or whatever. Okay, that's fine. But then he was just kind of around. <laughs> and he, like I said, he won the TNT title. And now the Bucks are off TV. Okada's doing his own thing. He's getting ready for the tournament. So it's just like, now it's just like Jack Perry wears a leather jacket and no shirt. And he drives a bus. Okay. So anyway, yeah, I think Danny Garcia should just win, <laughs> should just win the belt. And, and Jack can, Jack can go home and figure out what he does. <laughs> What it is he's supposed to be doing? He has an old bus he likes to tinker with. Yeah, yeah. So go, you can come back as a mechanic, perhaps. Or just come back co- as the Jungle Boy and play the song that everybody liked. Ooh, uh, ooh, uh, ooh, uh, ooh, uh. Sure. It's just, just people liked that act. <laughs> it's okay to just be like a, a an over tag team sing along act. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Source Strickland, Bobby Lashley. Um, this isn't clicking with me, but I'll say of all the things going on in the show, it might be the thing that's closest to clicking. Fair. Uh, I I don't know. I is the hurt business or the hurt syndicate rather, uh, just doesn't feel like a fresh new act to me. And uh, Bobby, uh, Bobby Lashley, how can I miss you if you can't go away? <laughs> I uh. I don't know. I've been seeing Bobby Lashley on TV for 17, 17 years now. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I think on paper again, it's a good, it's a good idea as far as something for Swerve to do. That's that feels important on the show that isn't going after the world title. Um, I would assume you're going to go to him and Mox eventually. So uh, yeah, this is, this is a fine stop gap measure. Um, but in the short term, it's him feuding with three guys in their late forties or early fifties, maybe in MVP's case, uh, who just waltzed off of WWE. I mean, none of them were on television like the week before they left, but like just guys who feel like they just waltzed off of WWE television completely unchanged and are now in AEW and he's having to, and he's selling for them every week to get them over, which I understand in principle, but also it's just, I don't know. And also I think my my fear is at the end of this, 
it's got to be it's got to lead to a long Bobby Lashley singles match and I don't know that that's going to be something that's any good in <laughs> in uh, in the year of our lord uh, 2024 it's been a little while since I've seen a bodacious bob match that I thought really uh really cooked I think it's been 17 years since <laughs> I saw one. seen a match yeah <laughs> I was trying to think like the last really good Bobby Lashley match I saw it's- 17 years ago. <laughs> yeah. I, <was> trying. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I would never go back and watch anything from the, the COVID era, especially not in WWE. So I, I won't know if any of his Drew matches were any good. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, also coming up at full gear next weekend, Mercedes Money versus Chris Statlander. Uh, pretty standard build for this going along. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Chris is the Terminator and just yeah. beats up Mercedes and her very ineffective. <laughs> they really, they really nerfed Camille very quickly, didn't they? Yeah, that's a. Yeah, I don't. The problem is, I don't know how you do that without completely undercutting her character. It's, but it's like the heat. Yeah, the baby face is always going to have to go through the bodyguard. It's just like, OK, we're in feud number two or whatever with Camille and already Camille is rendered inert. Yeah, I, that that to me, it just felt like it was a little bit too soon. Like I understand the idea of wanting like Chris to be established as this powerhouse that can, you know, world beater character again. All right. That's fine. Um, but yeah, doing it at the expense of this absolute killer who like didn't leave her feet for the whole <laughs> first six weeks she was in the company and now she's done a clean job and is getting laid out every week it's like oh, okay she's just uh she's lost if she if she had any aura i think it is i think it has gone now based on uh chris just beating her ass repeatedly yeah the bloom is off the rose for sure there uh four way for the tag team titles private party of the champions um doesn't feel like they're champions, but they're champions. The Outrunners, uh, a meme tag team. Funny comedy meme tag team. They're good. But uh, a meme tag team. And the third team that qualified for this match, defeating FTR, were Malachi Black and Brody King. Malachi Black fresh off doing a job for Adam Cole, making it look like he was leaving the company and then going <laughs> on the internet the next day and saying, I don't know why anyone thinks I was leaving the company. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, what? It, it, how? <laughs> how do you let Mal? How do you put Malachi Black on your television show ever again after what he did on your on your show last week? Let alone put him on TV the next week with a renewed push as a tag team guy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, I I would have let him go back to WWE two years ago or whenever he first tried to <laughs> the moment he asked yeah because like what what is he doing like the people <laughs> the parts of the act that people liked were Brody King and Julia Hart so if the other two guys want to go check to make sure their girlfriends or wives aren't <laughs> never mind uh, if they want to go back to be Travel on the road with their partners yes that is exactly what my intention with that <laughs> sentence was uh, They're just gonna. Tr- they want to travel with their partners, right? It's totally understandable. Let them go. They don't want to be there. Um, that's the partners fine. are are Rhea and uh, uh, Zelina, mm-hmm. and we know they that Zelina specifically has been through a lot. <laughs> uh huh. Um. Uh, yeah. So. I would have just let him go, but yeah, we, we talked about it a little bit last week. I don't, if this was like, if it's a bit that like the, the people making the show are in on with him, like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to really make, I'm really going to really going to mess with the internet again tonight. And they're like, yeah, great job, everybody. But he also like specifically like laid down and let Adam Cole. It's not just that he like shook Adam Cole's hand and hugged him after the match. He like let himself be beaten. Like, right. okay, I'm done now. Yeah. So, like, I, I don't know why you would book that finish if he was going to be on TV winning a number one contenders match like, <laughs> the following week. Even Seven days later. Even if it's a different division. It was it was bizarre. Um, but they did it. 
so I guess they're 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 baby faces anyway. But they, I guess, they're baby faces now. They beat FTR and they all hugged and shook hands. Yeah, I guess that's the that's the only that's that's maybe that was it. Maybe that was supposed to be a baby face turn for him. It's like I'm gonna let I'm gonna let little Adam Cole win a match, and then shake his hand. Then that was his baby face turn, and now now they solidified that with uh, with FTR this week. I don't know. Sure. Um, speaking of Adam Cole, he's not wrestling MJF at the pay per view. Roderick Strong is because Roderick Strong was the first to win three matches. Well, and because Ad- it would have been a three way if Adam had won his, but uh, right. he was he was defeated via chicanery. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. I guess <laughs> this goes against my pleas, which were to just get the Ad- Adam Cole MJF match out of your system and move on. Uh, we are not doing that yet, so I don't know. It feels like now maybe Adam doesn't have a match on the pay-per-view unless like, you rematch him against Takeshita, but then that would be a title match, and I don't think Takeshita's losing the belt yet, so I'm, I I wouldn't beat Adam a second time either. So maybe Adam just sits it out and just UMJF versus Roddy at that show, I guess. Okay. that's That's fine, sure. Uh, Jay White and Hangman Page are going to wrestle. I feel like I've seen this match a few times. Yeah, I mean they did it on TV in the in the Owen Hart tournament, and then they wrestled the last pay per view. Yeah, where Jay White beat him clean, <laughs> and and, uh, and then they're just they're just going to keep going because why why is Hangman aligned with patriarchy? Why is uh our Juice and Juice and Jay are like feuding with Christian and his his boy army? And um, I think so. Christian, Juice, and Jay are feuding with uh, Christian because they beat up the Bullet Club guys at some point, and I think cost them the trios championships. Okay, so that tracks. Um, because after uh, Jay beat Chris, uh, beat Hangman the first time, he said, "All right, now I'm going to go after Christian to get revenge." But then Hangman cost him the match against Christian. So I don't think Hangman and Christian are pals so much as they just both don't like Jay White. But also Christian is feuding with Hook. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. For I because I guess I kept expecting like a secondary reveal to that, but I guess it was just it was just Christian that that took out Taz's knee or whatever. Yeah, I don't I don't know, man. I I, I don't know. Or maybe it was <laughs> Kip Sabian or Nick Wayne who did it, but could have been. But they they took credit. The patriarchy as a whole took credit for for Taz being injured. I guess so. The state sponsored attack. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, QT Marshall is wrestling uh, uh, one of the Costco guys on the pre- on the pre show. Uh, I guess the Costco guys are uh, he's wrestling Big Boom AJ. I guess um, these guys are 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 popular and in certain corners of the internet. I. I never heard of them before about a month ago. And uh, I, <laughs> I wish that were still of, the case. I I had vaguely heard of them, but I've never, I had never seen a video of theirs where I clicked on to hear what they talked like or sounded like. Okay. Um, I still haven't, <laughs> but now I'm aware that there's like a whole bunch of, them. I did see the clip of them on, on Jimmy Fallon where they were talking about the match. So I've heard, big boom aj speak now there's but there's like 19 of of them in this group <laughs> oh there's there's dozens yeah there's there's like well then i was like okay i think i have a handle there's like there's big boom and his kid and then there's the rizzler and i was like right. all right all right there's those three those are the guys and then there's like there's like big boom aj's wife and i think there's a daughter as well and then there's like another three or four people after that i'm like i don't you're getting you're getting too much. I don't I'm not up to date on on Costco guys lore. I, I have no space in my life to, to learn about additional Costco guys or a Costco guy adjacent at this point. Yeah, I also thought I had a pretty good hold on it when it was just the 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 AJ Big Justice and the Rizzler. And uh yeah, and then I saw that video with like uh it appeared to be dozens of people doing <laughs> just doing uh calisthenics. And uh, it's like well, I don't know who any of these people are, but they're all apparently uh, in the in the Costco guys group, and uh, 
Yeah, there you go. They found popularity on TikTok and YouTube in 2024, according to Wikipedia, for their videos at the warehouse store Costco. Uh, okay. They have a uh, they have more than 2 million followers on TikTok. They have a management company, their debut hip-hop single, We Bring the Boom. Uh, okay. Well, uh, that's a fine pre-show thing, I think. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's fine. <laughs> like, I I don't know. It, this is uh, you know, the Logan Pauls of the world are are. Let, let's let's use them for what we can while we can. This is I think is the correct attitude to have towards all of these internet celebrities, and it looks like it's uh it's. This is it's just on the pre-show. It doesn't feel very AEW, but it's just on the pre-show. And it's QT Marshall, everyone's favorite. America's best friend. <laughs> he hasn't since he briefly quit the company and then came back when he found out he couldn't be a TV star in <laughs> WWE either. Um has he been on TV? Maybe he's doing ROH stuff. Like I don't even know if he's been wrestling on TV. Like um, I don't believe he has, but I will uh check here while we uh we talk about Dwayne and again in the media blitz that that as we wrap up the show here, Dwayne, um, GQ, Variety, all kinds of interviews this week, and uh, one of your favorite uh stories of his was uh there was a a sourced or an unsourced um article. Uh, that came out that said that he was late to set all the time. He would show up hours and hours and hours late. He would delay filming for hours and hours and hours. And he would also uh, pee in glass water bottles, <laughs> boss water bottles, and hand them off to assistants <laughs> rather than uh, use use a toilet. And um, and uh, well, he he answered some of those charges this week. That's right. The piss is true. <laughs> The piss part is true. He uh, he went out of his way to confirm that. He does, in fact, sometimes show up late, pee in water bottles, and make his assistants dispose of them. Unless there's, like, video evidence. <laughs> Why would you admit that if you're him? <laughs> um, I don't know, man. I don't know. There's not a lot about Dwayne Johnson currently that I understand. I thought I had a pretty good handle on him for uh, a long time there. And then uh, then he made the transition somewhere along the way from lovable celebrity to a guy who only exists to sell you products. Uh, you were way ahead of the curve on that. You called that probably 10 years before I did. <laughs> but uh, yeah, weird robot person in the, in the vein of John Cena and Tom Brady who only exists to sell you things. Uh, that was Dwayne. But uh, apparently he wanted to go out. I guess it makes him seem real. You know, if he just goes, I said, yeah, sometimes I'm late to work. Sometimes I make hundreds of people wait on me for no reason. And um, uh, and I do make them dispose of my urine. Uh, he is something else. I guess my we may have talked about this at the time when the first story came out. But it's like this guy famously uh, has his entire gymnasium like broken down and flown out to wherever he is filming and right. they like build a makeshift building for him to work out in. Right. Could we not allocate a few thousand dollars in your resources to build yourself like a private bathroom near the set? I would think a lot Um, bigger. I don't know. It's It's... It's not fair to say bigger stars because on one hand, who's a bigger star than who's a more recognizable face on the entire planet than Dwayne Johnson? Mm -hmm. Not many people. But maybe there are more actors with Hollywood cachet, the Clooney's, the Pitts, the Robert, Julia Roberts, people of this nature. I bet they have private bathrooms on their sets. And I bet it's not that unusual to ask for a private bathroom. Right. Like <laughs> that that this is the part to me. It's like also the idea of well, it's like, well, you know, once I'm there, I'm trying to make sure I'm not, you know, because well, the private the, the bathrooms 
a quarter mile away and I got to take a golf cart to it. And by the time I get there and get back, you know, we've wasted 20 minutes or whatever. It's like, okay, well, you've all, you're also wasting a lot more time. One could argue by being four hours late every day. <laughs> yeah. that's So fair. maybe you could be to set on time and then you could take 10 or 15 minutes to go to the bathroom, like a normal person instead of being four hours late and then pissing in bottles to save on save time. Perhaps we could, we could find better ways to allocate our, our time and resources in that way. Um, anyway, normal, he's a normal man, I think is, is the, is the, uh, is what we've arrived at here. He, he also made a point of saying that he went into, um, uh, when Oppenheimer came out, he went to see it in IMAX in the very specific, uh, same specific theater that Christopher Nolan screens all his movies in. And he asked to sit in the exact chair that Christopher Nolan sits in when he screams in movies. And uh, his takeaway from seeing Oppenheimer on the big screen was, and I quote, I was thinking, holy shit, Red One on this screen with this technology, it's going to be game over. <laughs> Red One that uh, it's not doing well. <laughs> it's on track to make 30 to $35 million in its opening weekend, and it uh, had a budget of $250 million, I think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's in a weird spot with his career, right? Because as we were talking about, uh, Jumanji, he's on for uh, Jumanji, whatever the next part is that comes out next year. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, He's in this red one thing that opens this weekend. And then that looks like the biggest piece of crap you've ever seen. And also also doesn't look like it's going to be financially successful. And then uh, he's got Moana coming out later this year, which is going to be hugely successful. Yeah, weird, weird career spot for Dwayne. Yeah, it's like he can he can still do that, and then so this this Moana is the animated sequel, and then they're also supposed to be doing a live action version of the first movie, which I believe he is going to play his role in oh, live action as well. So good, like he's got that that he's still got like the kids movies covered for sure, and then he did uh come back with his tail between his legs to the Fast and Furious franchise last year. Uh, so he'll he'll be back on there, which theoretically, I think those still make money. I don't think the last one did, but for the most part, they still make money. So he might be okay there, but he still doesn't really have the signature role that everybody wants to see him play. So the rest of the time, when he doesn't have a Moana or a Fast and Furious to do, he is doing red ones, I guess. Um, which... Uh, yeah, it looks like not only does it look like an, a Netflix movie uh, pejorative and uh, my my big takeaway from watching trailers and watching the way that uh, Chris Evans's hair is styled in that movie is that that part was 1000% uh, written for Ryan Reynolds and then he and Dwayne had their uh, had some friction and now Chris Evans is playing that role instead. That's that's complete conjecture on my part, but I just wanted to throw that out there. No, I I buy it. I buy it for a million reasons, and uh, I'm on uh, I'm on the Rotten Tomatoes page here for Red One. Thirty four percent currently, Oof. the critics score doesn't have fifty verified audience reviews yet to have an audience score, but I'm reminded that he was in a in a movie called Red Notice <laughs> on Netflix with uh, Gal Gadot and said. Ryan Reynolds, mm-hmm. and uh, that got a 37% from critics, but 92% uh, score from audience. So, um, anyway, it's just insane to me that he's in a movie called both Red One and Red Notice. <laughs> one one was Netflix. That was Red Notice. Red One is Amazon Studios, but it had a theatrical release. Yeah. I guess and I don't the other thing too is that like a movie like this that he's doing, he's doing a Christmas movie that's coming out in mid-November. In the olden days of Hollywood, this would just be in theaters for a long time and maybe have a chance to make its money back over over the long haul. Yeah. But that's not really how things work. Like things are in theaters for like three weeks now. So like this is gonna be this could be out of theaters out of most theaters at least by Christmas, like before Christmas. <laughs> so I don't really know like what, like what the strategy was to release it. Unless the plan is like, we release it theatrically now because that's part of the deal. And then like Amazon's going to put it 
up on on prime like christmas eve or something and it's just a plan to they have to put it in theaters but then they're just going to dump it on streaming like around around the holiday anyway i don't know but it's i'm fascinated by by all of this yeah um you know who plays mrs claus in this in this red one movie Sama Hayek or somebody? Unfortunately, it's Bunny Hunt. Oh. <laughs> I thought they would go for a completely different direction for that. <laughs> Pretty much the exact opposite of Sama Hayek. Well, the, just, the idea yeah, is like Bunny everyone's Hunt's like delightful. Cool and hot. Like even like right. J.K. Simmons in that movie is like jacked, jacked to the gills. Jack cool hot Santa. Right. And you know, Dwayne's is cool hot elf, and Ryan Reynolds is the it's the cool whatever he is character is, yeah. And there's cool. gotta be a, a there's gotta be a lady that either Chris Evans and or well Dwayne doesn't really kiss women in his movies. I that's, noticed that's, you ever noticed that? Yeah. Huh. There's a Tom Cruise kind of had Tom Cruise had a long <laughs> drought where he didn't kiss any women in his movies too, that which was broken I think by the second Top Gun. But I think there's like certain. Uh, movie stars that just get like focus tested out of doing romantic subplots. And I mean, it, it would be one. really, off, it would be really off putting to see The Rock making out with someone now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> just for yeah. me personally, nah, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> the guy who asked to sit in Christopher Nolan, see how bad does he want to be like a serious actor? He's, he's got his A24 movie coming out uh, next year, so yeah, he'll have his it. chance. Yeah, I don't, I don't like his chances. I mean, the uh, the Von Erichs movie didn't really win anything. No, <laughs> it, I, I don't even think they got like Golden Globes. Yeah. All right. Well, that's this week in Dwayne. Uh, anything else you want to talk? About? That's this week in Piss Talk. Uh, no, I think we're all done. All right. Till next time, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Mahalo. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. You, if you put a little bit of uh, like New York Italian into this, you could be you could be giving old Joe Tessitore a, a run for his many jobs. I would have to smoke cigarettes every day for the next thirty five years <laughs> to sound like Joe Tessitore. Unfortunately, don't let your dreams be dreams. All right. <laughs> it's- Right. I saw a thing this week that was like, uh, you know, every day a crackhead wakes up, no money. They still get cracked. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lesson to be learned here. 100. 100%. <laughs> Joe Tessitore was born in the wrong era because he looks like, like in the, as you pointed out, in the 50s or 60s, you know, not many guys had beards like that, but the rest of his aesthetic is 50s and 60s. Mm-hmm. And yet uh, he kind of stands out here in 2024. He's unique. I I, uh, I, mean, I knew he did other sports, but I, I caught some of, I don't know, one of the college football games at the, right. at the bar the other night that he was, that he was calling. I was like, God, he, just look at him. <laughs> <laughs> interesting looking man yeah i could uh i'm could pretty easily cook up some uh like letterman one monologue one-liners about like he had some about mitt romney mm-hmm. like, mitt romney looks like a guy who plays the plays the piano in a department store it's one of my <laughs> all-time favorite jokes <laughs> Look at my all-time favorite jokes. That's incredible. That is great. <laughs> yeah. Joe Testor looks like uh 
the manager at the mechanic who tells you, yeah, it is standard to check for all these things during an oil change. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think mine was he was a <laughs> he was a Long Island lacrosse coach who gets fired for saying a slur. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a man from a different time. Yes. He can't keep up with all these uh all these pronouns and stuff. So what do you think of all the cabinet appointments this week? I don't, I'm not going to take up your whole night, but uh, if you could just, <laughs> while well, I get situated here, uh, we have a uh, uh, a meme department in the government now. That sounds bad. And the Department uh, of Efficiency, where two guys are going to do one job. Yeah, that sounds terrible. And then uh, we put a, uh, an alleged pedophile is going to be uh, the Attorney General. Mm-hmm. And he resigned the day before an ethics report would have come out about him. I don't know. Can we just release that report anyway? I don't know. Be nice. Yeah. Not and uh, a guy, a, a anti vaxxer uh, with a lot of uh, with a lot of the same views on health and nutrition as Eric Bischoff is going to run the Department of Health and Human Services. He wants to take fluoride out of the water. And uh, get rid of uh, a lot of other things. What do you think of these things? I mean, like, it's as advertised. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know if anyone was had him picking uh, Matt Gates for AG, but like, as far as like, yeah, he's going to fill it up with sycophants and people that kiss the ring. Um, and I mean, I thought it was a nice little touch just for that, like. And it's a very small group of people uh, when you compare it to like the population of this country. But the like, you know, the one percent or so uh, of of like online semi lefty, actually kind of libertarian guys who all have YouTube shows. Hi. Uh, yes. Who said <laughs> that, uh, that that Trump is actually a you know less of a war hawk than than Biden and Harris would be, and then he went it goes and posts. Little Marco, like the most like bog standard, let's invade Iran, let's let's get back into Afghanistan guy to Ugh. be yeah, you know, to be in charge of in charge of this. He plucked whatever that Fox News host is. Um or like Secretary of Defense. Yeah. So it's just gonna be yeah, it's gonna be just if you I, it's one of those ones where it's like, yeah, he's going to pick sycophants. He's going to pick lunatics. He is going to almost, if not completely, gut the Department of Education. Like, it's going to be really bad. I don't. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. But, you know. Maybe maybe it won't be. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the dog will not dunk the basketball this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, as you were making a point, something you said struck me, and I don't remember what it is now. Um, is it about little Marco? It was bef- it was in that stretch. It was before uh, little Marco popped up, though. Uh, <laughs> little Marco, you think if he's with little Larry Hogan, yeah, lost least... in his Maryland Center race? Do we have to ever see him again? Now, I mean, he thinks he can run for president, right? Oh, in twenty eight. I... But I'm sure he does. Uh, maybe as a Democrat. <laughs> mm. um, but uh, I'm, I mean, I'm sure he'll still be on as long as, uh, you know, CNN or MSNBC still has has a market for uh, pundits who will call themselves conservatives, but also go on TV and criticize Donald Trump. You know, the Chris Christie market. Michael uh, Steele. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll he'll have a role on cable news. I don't think he has a relevant role to play in <laughs> in national politics ever again. But uh, yeah, he'll 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 get himself on TV. I'm sure. No, oh, that's great. Or he could also always, you know, get himself a a a, a, a talk radio show on AM 1090 or a sports show, inexplicably like the former. <laughs> the former Baltimore police commissioner has had in this, in this state for 15 years now. Yeah. 
Yeah, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, Larry's probably too rich to have to do that. The the former That's police true. commissioner did, accidentally did a little mortgage fraud. Let's see. <laughs> A little politically motivated uh, prosecution for mortgage fraud. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I try to keep on keeping on.